of Bob Melvin. Like, it, it, I know you can appreciate this. <laughs> I have been weary of Bob Melvin since day one when it comes to going to the bullpen. He believes in certain guys way more than I do. To a fault. Yes. Fine. He thinks Ryan Walker is something special, or maybe he just thinks he's the best of what they have. I don't think much of Ryan Walker. I think he's a niche type of a player, sixth, seventh inning guy. I don't like him in the eighth inning, mm -hmm. but I don't think they have a true eighth inning guy. So that's not necessarily a Bob Melvin problem. You went to Camilo Duvall against the bottom of the order in a tie ball game in the ninth. He throws like a handful of pitches. And then at the top of the order, when you have a righty and Mookie Betts coming up, you go to the lefty Taylor Rogers. Now, I understand you got Otani and Freddie Freeman coming up, two lefties. Mm -hmm. and, and Freddie Freeman does not hit the lefties well. But Camilo's your best pitcher by far. And if you're just going for like, in, in that bullpen, and if you're just going off like form, Taylor Rogers has not been in form all year. So, like, it just it doesn't make sense to me. I also don't get the, like, he had eight pitches or whatever it was. Why not? Roll him back out well, there. Well, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, is there some, like, unwritten thing where you don't want to bring him out for another inning and stuff like that? I just, I didn't understand that either. That's the one arm I could rely on heavily right now is Camilo Doval. Yeah. And I don't know. Listen, the Dodgers, we just read off from this. I don't know if he's going to get another situation that he's going to come in and pitch in a tight game this series. It, it could be possible that he doesn't and he has a couple 100%. days rest. Like, Go out there. Like, that's a game that sets the tone for a series, Joe Shasky. Yes. That you kind of you needed. Yeah, you right? get the first one. Yes. And you, then that sets the tone for the rest. You know what? And you know you have Logan Webb on rubber day, if if need be. Correct. And then you got the you got the Rockies coming to yep. town. And you got the Pirates who aren't playing too well and stuff. By the way, are they going to get Paul Skeens in that matchup or no? Oh, I think they will. I, I had it written Ooh. down here. Wait, Paul Skeens. One sec. I have it written down here. One sec. Let me look uh, it up. That was standing though. But like. That was a game that could have set the tone for the young guys. Webb in the youth movement. versus Skeens, Ooh. May twenty second, Wednesday is the potential matchup. Ooh. See, I do, I, I do my homework. Webb versus Skeens, Wednesday, May twenty second, must see television. That is, but but to your point, so like let's go. The bullpen is a bottom five bullpen by a lot of metrics right now. The Giants, Camillo is good. I don't I don't know how great he is currently. We can see that he's got a lot of potential. But I don't think he's, I don't think he's even near where his prime is yet. I think he's still developing. I mean, it's pretty good. He was no, all star really last year. Yeah, he's really good. But who do you trust in that bullpen outside of Camilo Duvall? Oh, that's so. You got the the Rogers Bros. I think Tyler has been very mediocre. I think Taylor has been up and down. He's had a couple of good performances, a couple of really really bad ones that have diluted some of his numbers. Ryan Walker has had moments. He's, he's been good. I, I feel like he's being overexposed. Yeah. I think we're using him I a like his too much. Well, Sunday though. was the first time he gave up a run in like over almost yeah. a month. So. I, yeah. I, I, I hear you, but wouldn't you agree like they're using him in a lot of high leverage situations? Yeah. I, 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 my I, template I, I do. I liked him in the eighth inning last year. This year, i kind of more on with you. What you've Sixth, been saying. Sixth, inning seventh inning. Yeah. He's really good. Um, but they so, don't have yeah. an eighth inning guy. Like that's kind of like I'm. In a roundabout way, I'm defending Bob while also being frustrated with Bob going to like I feel like I'm He doesn't have a true option to work with there. That's what I'm to saying. To be honest, I coming into this year, um I honestly thought we were gonna see Jordan Hicks be that eighth inning guy. Because I was very skeptical about how the starting Thank job God would work he's out. Yeah, no, he's killed at the starting job. That's great. But I mean, that was kind of my thought. I don't know if that was the Giants' thought. My guess is it wasn't. But no, to your point, Shasky, I mean at this point, I'm thinking eighth inning. I saw Tyler Rogers in there. I'm just like, oh no. I know you were thinking like, the same thing. I was. Like, I'm like, on the mo for the most part, I do kind of trust Tyler Rogers. I do kind of trust Ryan Walker. But you shouldn't have to put the kind of qualifier so, there. The, the other thing is, is in that, and I, I noticed this last night on the broadcast, and maybe it was a one off, but Taylor, uh, Tyler Rogers, excuse me, the one who submarines right handed. He's got mm -hmm. the glove wide open. He's got the trapeze Rawlings, okay? Yes. The Pro 205. You love your gloves. I do love my gloves. <laughs> and he's got it wide open, and you could see him playing with the ball. So next time you watch him pitch, he's tipping his pitch. Anybody who gets to second base is going to be able to see everything. Now, you know, obviously he might change things up when guys get a second. But the broadcast is showing you he when he goes to the curveball grip, you could see him, you know, finagling with the ball in the glove. Mm. He does not hide it very well. So I, I just I don't love the bullpen right now. I, I think they need to make well, there's two things they need. They need to trade for a defensive catcher, a backup at right now, a defense first catcher, and they said they need a bullpen arm. And I'm sure there are 20 other teams well, saying the same thing. I'm going to be fascinated to see how these things break down, depending on where they are come the trade deadlines. A couple months to go here. 
Are they going to be sellers? Are going to be buyers? Stuff like that. Because there you go. Thank you, Joey Bart. Um, but I'm looking at the bullpen, and that's usually going to be a premium for teams that are contenders moving forward. Do you address that now, this early in the season? Who's like moving off? Are you like there's three teams that are god awful? One of them is in your own division, <laughs> the Colorado Rockies. Although they just swept the Texas Rangers, didn't they? Defending yes. champs, whatever. So I don't know. It's 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 tough to find the consistent bullpen, and especially a guy in Bob Melvin, who you've alluded to, who's had a tricky history when it comes to managing those in the past. And it's unfortunate, too, because I felt like that was going to be one of the strengths heading into the season. Now, things may turn around. Mm -hmm. Remember last year, what was everyone saying? The the, uh, starting rotation is going to be one of the strengths of the team, and the bullpen was going to be trash, and it was the opposite last year. So maybe things shake out and they work out a little differently. But right now, it's Ryan Walker, it's Camilo Doval, and then it's a lot of uh, so clench my butt right now, especially going up against the likes of Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, let alone like those guys. But going up against hell, the Cincinnati Reds, who don't have a lot of bangers right there. Well, and what were the Cincinnati Reds doing? Running like crazy Correct. on this they catch try- on yes. this catching unit. And That's- so like the the absence of Patrick Bailey is felt tremendously right now. Not just defensively, but for your pitching staff, I, having I a was, lack of trust there, right, Joe Shasky? You, I, you're you're bringing it right right to where I want to be. Like Pat, I heard. From someone who's very informed with the Giants, Patrick Bailey was sick, but also there's some lingering stuff. Uh, that was the exact way it was phrased to me. He- head injuries. There's no such it, thing it's as a not mi- good. No such thing as a minor concussion. It's just not good. No it, such thing as a minor concussion. And and so I would just say like we we really need to like we need to hope that Patrick Bailey gets right because I I'm I'm very concerned now. Now I I hope two days from now, a week from now, this is just an afterthought. And we can plow forward. Joe Panic had a concussion that lingered for months. Do you remember that year when he got hit in the head, running back into the dugout? Like months that ended up. Well, how was it? One year, uh, Brandon Belt uh, yes. pregame took a took a ball to the head yeah. during, and, a, and it he was out for weeks after that, and, yeah. and played in the game. Didn't know until like the next day how severe it was. Anthony Rizzo last year at the Yankees, I felt like missed the whole year after he got a concussion. These things are. I, I got. Uh, his 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 like thing was like delayed like he couldn't his his like hand eyes coordination was all delayed and slow. And on the flip it's, side, yeah, Slater this Friday where he kind of showed right away. Oh, yeah, you knew right away. And then I remember so Friday night we were, we were talking to Bob Melvin in the, in the dugout beforehand. He was very optimistic that Bailey would be ready to go uh, on Saturday. And notice he was walking around. He had this little like neck fan that he wears around his neck. I guess it's you wear it and it kind of the, the the air kind of helps kind of huh. lessen it's, concussion. It's I'm, the blood I'm looking flow. into it right yeah, now. Yeah, there's but, like blood flow relations with the so head. He had I noticed yeah. he had that on on Friday night. Um, but these so. things can change. So, like, you could be – so, like, for example, I've had multiple concussions uh, throughout my life, and we know way more now than well, we back did in the day, months. it was bell rung, right? You were just seeing stars. Bro, my feet were sore for a week. Yeah. Like, it was as if I got in a car accident. Mm-hmm. Now, my dad had fell from the roof and banged his head really <laughs> bad, and the next day he was all right. It was two, three, four, five, six days later, and he was done for like three weeks. Post-concussion. His equilibrium was so bad, and it took a long time for him to recover from that. So everybody reacts different to this brain trauma and and these brain injuries. And so I I, I really hope that he's okay. And I do think we're a little desensitized, too, not to cut you off there, Joe, because... We see it in the NFL. Oh, get back in there. The concussion protocol. Oh, he cleared. Purdy. Pro- oh, Brock Purdy, Monday Night Football in a short week. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Don't worry. He'll, he'll play the next week. Don't worry about that. And th- that's the stuff you kind of worry about, especially with catchers, because in every single play and every single at-bat, Joe Shasky, he could be diving for a ball. He can get a foul mm-hmm. tip, which we don't think about a lot. We think about the balls hitting him in the head or something like that. Bats that get hit oh, yeah. on the top of the head when they don't have any protection or the back of the head. That stuff's scary. It's it's no joke right now. So definitely, if you're Patrick Bailey, you got to get that checked out. And if you're the Giants, you got to do right by your player. Well, and and I think you alluded to it, and it's something that I I, I talk to a lot of young catchers. It's like how to set up certain hitters in certain situations, right? And this is like a little league thing, but like, hey, when you're up 0-2 on somebody and you're you're the catcher and you got to pitch on the mound, you got to pitch to waste. Okay, if you're gonna throw a breaking ball, don't throw a hanger. Throw one that's gonna be out away from the plate or in the dirt, in the make dirt. that guy chase, yeah. right? So that's basic one-on-ones. But not having Patrick Bailey, I do wonder how much the bullpen misses him in terms of sequencing, understanding what guys like in certain situations. Blocking pitches. What? Blocking pitches. Well, well, Blake Sable cost him 90 feet oh. last night, which cost Jordan Hicks a shot at winning that game. Right. Down, I think he was down on the one knee, too, and that ball got away. Oh, well. The one I know. knee, you know what I'm saying. Well, yeah, Ray I, Fossey I thought, I literally, I thought of you. One I hate one knee, too. I, 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 I 
thought of you when that happened. You know I, I hate could hear, it. I could hear you screaming somewhere. I hate the one knee thing and all the advanced it analytics. You. It, it, you can't block. You yeah. can't move. You can't shuffle. Jordan Hicks is a great example. He's wild. Like he, I love him. He's super wild. And he throws with crazy velo, and you get a lot of downward spin. And so, if you're not able to shuffle right from your crotch or your crouch, excuse me, to going <laughs> left or going right, you're going to be limited in how you block. So and why is Sable backhanding everything? Because he's on one knee. And then you're comparing him to one of the, uh, if not the best catcher in the game, Will Smith on the other side, both who's, offensively and defensively, just a massive stud who's dealing with. Pitches okay. going spin rate times a thousand. Totally Blake agree. Trinan showed. Um, we got Yamamoto there. You got all those guys and stuff like that. So it just highlights even more the deficiencies of your own players right now. But God bless Blake Sable again. Like we're talking about some of these guys and the youth movement, what have you. And Patrick Bailey showed flashes last year. Joe, where are you at, real quick, with with Patrick Bailey? Because last year, hell, even I was comparing to this guy. Like. Is this the next Buster Posey? And that's unfair. But you so just, unfair. But you just saw the bat. <laughs> no, because it happened immediately. You saw the bat immediately, yeah. and you saw the defense. This guy was throwing out Ellie De La Cruz. Yeah. He was throwing out uh, not SDA Ruiz, who was a baller last Mookie year. Mookie Betts. He was throwing out Mookie Betts. He was throwing out everyone. Yeah. And then you started to see the wear and tear that last month of the season, right? I wasn't throwing him out as much. Yeah, he, he the bat down. cooled out. Where are you with Patrick Bailey right now as being one of the pieces? Because I've, I viewed him like I viewed Harrison, like... That's someone I could build around. Do you still feel like that? I do. Give me a second here. Oh, sure. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ. That is important. AFD and HC1, San Francisco and Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app. Don't forget, you can also watch us every day on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter streams, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings today and get your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. Do I believe in Patrick Bailey as, a, as the long-term catcher? I do. I, I don't think development is a straight line upward. I think you're going to have some ups and some downs, and there's going to be moments where you adjust to the league, the league adjusts to you. There are certain flaws in your game that get accentuated. I think defensively he got crossed up a handful of times. Something was going on with him sticking the glove, uh, the ball actually you know, going into the glove. The arm is still elite. He was just a little erratic behind the plate this year, early on. I thought he settled in the last couple of weeks. The bat's been really good. It's way better at the big league level than it was at the minor league level. Both sides of the plate. Weird how that happens sometimes. Certain it really guys. is. Yeah. So, do I believe in him? Yes. Um, for now. Okay. Like for now. Yes. Do I think that he's on like a even like a he's your next catcher for ten years? No. Uh, relax. No. Yeah. It's just like right now. It's kind of year to year. Right. I'm just kind of year to year. Uh, something has gone down. You have a couple guys with high leg kicks in the stretch, and that's Jordan Hicks is one of them. They're, they just can't control the running game right now. Yeah. Everyone's running on them, and that's not a Bailey thing. It's like the staff has to learn to hold Time guys in. on. Yeah. You don't have to get the, the quick slide step. Like There's a variety of things going on, but Bailey is so far. Like, it's so unfair. He's not even close to Buster Posey, yeah. but who is? Yeah. I mean, Buster came in immediately, rookie of the year, and then you guys want to win a World Series. Kurt like, Manwaring was was like the guy I came, like it was Terry Kennedy and Kurt Manwaring. Those are the guys yeah. that my my formative years of being a Giants fan, and those guys were really good. You know, solid defensive catchers. I put Bailey in that category, solid defensive catcher. Yeah, but like to be one of the top dogs in the league year in year out, like Yadier Molina or Buster Posey, those guys are just few and far between. It's it's an unfair comp. It is. It, it is. just is. Can he get to like a Sean Murphy type first or something like or Travis Darno? And even then, it's like those guys are so talk about two tandems as far as catching like goes. Contreras. Well, some Contreras. There you go. He's really good. Yes. He He's like year in year out. He gives you offensive production and a baseline of good defense, right? And he's healthy a lot, right? So yeah. this is like. Like, you got to put together a full season. And we're, that's not me hating on Bailey. No. Just, it is what it is. And we're talking about that. And we're all, why we're dissecting a guy like Patrick Bailey, if you're tuning in here, Joe Spadoni alongside Joe Shasky, the morning roast. We're just talking about the future of this Giants team because last night it felt fun. It felt it like that atmosphere. Like, I felt Oracle Park for the first time in a long time. Now, part of that was because of the Dodgers, the spectacle, Shohei Otani, the crowd, all the Dodger blue there. But you know what? I kind of like that. Like, I, I'm not a, a, a fan. Like, I'm not a diehard fan. I hate Thank them you, Robert. so much. I know. I do like their jersey. One second. I Because I, I'm going to forget. The cursive Los Angeles oh. road jersey is almost a perfect jersey. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. And I, I hate the Dodgers, but I respect that that road gray jersey 
is as close to perfect as possible. Outside of the Angels, where I think are pretty mad, I'd say I would take the four road jerseys in California of San Diego, Giants, A's, Dodgers. I'll put them against anyone. Well, the A's, I think, have the, the, some of the best The white cleats, all time. I know, and stuff incredible. like that. I can't wait until the Sacramento A's of Las Vegas playing in Oakland. It's awesome. Um, I'm so sorry. I know, it's just, and it's I hilarious. watched them versus the Astros last night. And they were hanging around. And but, Brett Rooker, the guy's a player. No, he's good. He's, he's a good. player. He was an all-star good. last year. He proved that he's belonged. He's no, a he's, player. He had a slow start, but he's a baller. Bregman is, if Bregman's available, I know we have Chapman now. Bregman is going to be a free agent. Well, <laughs> if Bregman's available, I want him. I mean, he's another older piece. Is he going to be the guy? He's thirty something. I, I just he hits bombs. I'm convinced now, and I'm bringing this all full circle. A guy like Bregman, an older guy, like just go all in on the young guys at this point. Just go no, all in on them. I think that is what was a breath of fresh air last night for Giants fans. I agree, and why they were so happy, and why they started talking on social media like the big boss man was talking about, because we have a future to be excited about potentially. Yeah, we don't even know that. Like. There's a dead end of dead weight on the, a lot of the Giants players right now that I don't... And I like Mikey Stremski, and I like Lamont Wade, who's been very good. He's been awesome. He's Jerry been Harrison awesome. Jr. just talked about that this But year. if you could flip him for something in the future, you owe it to yourself At to do it. At the trade deadline, Absolutely. if you're sellers, absolutely. A high OBP that. guy to a contender who needs an outfielder.